You can learn a lot from a broken bicycle. When I was a teenager, I was riding a broken bike down a huge hill. My front brake rubbed on my tire, exploding it catastrophically. I flipped over the bars and landed on my shoulder in a huge crunch. In that moment, I learned that I wasn't invincible, which is a really good thing to learn as a teenager. But most importantly, I learned that there are consequences to our actions. And you can try and ignore some things, but you're going to have to deal with them in one way or another. Years later, I was riding another bike on a huge adventure in a foreign country, and I felt great until that bike broke too, and then I felt like a dumb American tourist who couldn't speak the local language and couldn't even fix a flat. I decided I had to learn to fix bicycles, and I did so through a strange and wonderful place called the Bicycle Collective. I started as a volunteer and eventually took over as a director. There I learned the most important thing a broken bike has ever taught me. Improving things is easier than we think. It's something we can all do, and when you learn this, it's infectious. You want to share that knowledge with other people so they can become stronger people, enabled people. And by helping them, you're really also helping yourself. The Bicycle Collective is a human-powered upcycling factory that uses raw materials intercepted from the scrap heap, fixed through education, and given away to give people a shot at a more self-sufficient life. It's a machine that results in more bikes, happy people, and less trash in the landfill. What we do is we take unused bikes and we use them to build skills in all types of people. Depending on the type or quality of the bike, it can be fodder for learning, a tool for transportation, or a way of making money. Often, it's all three. We give thousands of refurbished bikes away every year. We teach hundreds of kids through our education classes, and we help thousands of individuals with, with bike problems on their own. We have several locations across the state, and it seems like every year what we do grows in size, but we had no idea what we were doing when we started. We kind of still don't. But people come in and knock on our doors at all hours to give us valuable junk. It's one of those upcycling systems that really works, but it wasn't even our idea. There are over 450 organizations like this across the world, and chances are there's one near you. If there's not, you can gather up bikes and get to work. But in a funny way, it's not about those bikes. So when somebody comes into our shops for the first time, we're not really looking to turn them into the next Lance Armstrong. We're using that bike as an intuitive tool to fight learned helplessness. So learned helplessness is the psychological concept that is best demonstrated through a series of sad tests using dogs. Researchers would take dogs and they'd split them up into two groups and electrically shock them. One of the groups of dogs could do something to avoid the shocks. The other group could do nothing. What the researchers would do is the, the powerless dogs would get shocked, they'd cower and they'd suffer, the other dogs would escape. But the eye-opening thing was when the variables were changed and both groups could do something, either paw at a lever or jump over a barrier, the previously powerless group remained powerless, which tells us something about human behavior as well. Humans aren't dogs, but the same has been shown to translate, shown to, translate to more complex interactions. People, if we feel powerless, we repeat disempowering behavior, and we overlook solutions to our problems. So what we do in our organizations is we use the bicycle as that intervention to get the dogs to move, or sorry, to get the people to move. <laughs> Not talking about dogs. Get the people to move for the first time out of their learned behavior. We work with partner organizations to identify people who are in most need of a bike. They can be homeless or refugees 
mentally ill or recovering from addiction, let's say you decide that a bicycle would help you out of a rut. We'll give you the first one, no questions asked, to the tune of over 600 adult bikes every year. Now some of us, this bike isn't really going to solve our problems right away. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't do anything for these people, it's no big deal. It was just a bike. It was a low-cost investment with a huge potential for payoff. But for most of us, if we're given a bike, if we're given a tool, we'll give it a shot. Maybe begrudgingly, maybe with pride, maybe obsessively. But we'll start pedaling. So picture this, you just got your first bike, and it's in way better shape than this one, and you're pedaling up hills, and you're going around your town for the first time in this new way, and it's hard, but you're trying. So every bike rider in this room knows what happens next. You get a flat. Now this, is the key thing. Because we at Bike Collectives, we provide transportation, but more significantly, we provide self-sufficient transportation. That means that while a bike will work for you, you have to keep it working. And bikes, they're transparent about consequences, so they break. Nothing teaches you the limitation of your own ability, like when you deal with that first flat for the first time. It's a frustrating struggle, that often results in another flat because of some small part of your technique that you overlooked. This moment could easily be the moment of defeat. I'm sure there are people here today who have not gotten past that point. But for us, it's where things really get started. See, people don't like to fix flats because they don't like to fail. And often that means they don't try. But by consolidating all those broken bikes, we created an environment where people could fail without consequences or without negative consequences. And as a result, they learn. So after, we'll take anyone and teach them how to fix that first flat and every other mechanical problem that comes up along the way. After a series of those moments, fixing the bike, people start to see the cause and effect results that come from dealing with problems through a mechanical lens. And as a result, they gain the thinking and confidence to do better across the board. To see this philosophy in action, I looked to our volunteer coordinator, Mike Holden. A few years ago, Mike was a chronically homeless man who came into the Bike Collective for something to do. He loved bikes, and he wanted to contribute. The volunteer programs at the Bike Collective gave him the stability to find a stable place to live, led to a job, and finally to a career. Mike is now the first point of contact for everyone who comes into our Salt Lake location. He shows people how to fix up bikes, and he welcomes them into the space. Now, the great thing about Mike is he has this kind of self-actualization that comes from affecting his community positively. So every day when he wakes up, he's not looking to just deal with the daily grind. He's thinking about how he can evolve further. So we've seen how bikes can help the people most in need, but this doesn't really explain why our system works so impressively well despite our own ineptitude. Bike collectives work because they bring together people like Mike, lawyers who race triathlons, teenagers who just graduated from our kids' classes, refugees from the Middle East, overweight uncles looking to get in shape, and everybody else. These people pitch in because, like me, they see the benefit in their own lives and they like how easily that translates to helping other people. They ride, donate, and fix bikes by the thousands because it makes them happy. I believe we're smart enough to fill the world with that type of person. Earlier, I used two unlikely phrases to describe a community nonprofit. Factory and machine. These systems have a reputation that's justified of costly and dirty rampant growth. What we do, and systems like us, can scale in the same way. But it paints a very different picture. In a given year, we fixed 13,000 of those flat tires. And that is a quantifiable mechanical output. 
but each of those flat fixes represents an exchange between a teacher and a student, a moment of frustration, followed by that incredible, elating experience when you learn to do something right. Now, I don't think that we're going to save the world by doing this, but there's always room to do better work. What we do with bikes, you can do as well with farming or computers or sewing machines or art education. This model can be applied to whatever you're passionate about. So whether you're fixing machines or changing your life, find the process that just pedal by pedal makes the broken things work a little bit better. Thank you. <laughs>